In the Arab world, specifically in Oman, we have a lot of uh, waste generated from dates because we are huge consumers of dates. And the, at the time, the date seeds were used for coffee, as coffee beans, and we thought, can we actually utilize the oil content in the seeds to convert that into biodiesel because it has about 9 to 15% of oil in the seeds, and that's what sparked the idea in the very beginning. And that was back in 2015. For me, it was a personal achievement because I wanted to drive home the point that research can go from the lab to the road. And it's a very strong message to send to our youth, to our students, to our society, that research should be f focused on real problems in our countries and in the world. If everybody focused their R&D on, on a real challenge in our country, then we will be part of driving the economy, um, finding solutions. So this is going to create jobs for the farmers because instead of them throwing the seeds on the, for, in the farming industry, now they're going to actually be part of the solution for the collection. One of the biggest challenges was the mindset. Uh, we, were, we were not thinking of alternative energies. We were heavily dependent on fossil fuels. Um, the funds at the very beginning was very difficult to be granted because people were just uh, investing in things that were trendy uh, at the time. Now that the topic of renewable energy is a hot spot, we're getting a lot more funds than, uh, than earlier, which we're very happy with. So it starts with the end consumer understanding the value and importance of renewable energy, specifically biofuels. And from the um, organizational side or the government side, we need legislations, we need tax exemptions. Just like any other kind of renewable energy, we need some sort of mandates that will help push uh, the scientific efforts in this field.
if you look at any of the major sort of developments, whether it's the wheel or the plow or the printing press or the steam engine or the internet, none of those have resulted in a massive drop off of employment. So I don't think that AI is going to be the exception. labor shortage question is key because as demographics show a shrinking working population in developed economies, I think this is going to be a way that we can drive growth notwithstanding that. The amount of thinking time that's going into this is huge. The amount of budget dollars being applied to it are relatively small. Why is that? Well, it's because people understand that uh, generative AI is going to disrupt every company and every industry and every geography. They just don't know quite what it'll mean for them. What they can't see yet is how AI can drive revenue growth generally. Mm. And that's why people are holding back in terms of deciding how to apply their investment dollars. What we're finding from our uh, client work is that the winners in AI are the people who have the best data, not the people that have access to the best large language models. I think as people understand how to deploy their data for commercial advantage and then work out what the consequent impact is on energy consumption and how they set it up for success is going to be at the core of those discussions. Mm -hmm.